Welcome back to Miked Up. Uh, we are excited to be joined by our next guest, Billy. Anybody who's patiently waiting in the on deck circle for us to get, for me to stop talking and get out of the uh, Heineken headlines and get to him. Uh, I know a lot of people listening to the show want us to get to you, Billy. Um, thanks for joining us. You know, obviously, you do a lot of recruiting uh, conversations. You, you cover recruiting for on three. You cover LSU. Um, Demario Tolan en- enters the transfer portal. What is that about? Is that a shock to people outside of the program or inside the program? Is this something they were expected? What the heck is happening? Yeah, this is a little bit of a surprise for us, uh, just following it on our end of things, because somebody that Brian Kelly talked up uh, just in November saying, you know, watch him and Harold Perkins. They're kind of next. So uh, this is one where when he didn't end up going to the bowl game and didn't play, um, that's probably a red flag. And now you see him enter the portal. Um, you, I'm not really sure, quite honestly, what what ended up happening. But, you know, he's somebody who played in 12 games as a, as a true freshman. His future looked bright. Uh, they battled uh, to hang on to him, you know, when Brian Kelly took over and they brought him back in for an official visit to, you know, try and, you know, keep him on board. And for it to, you know, end this way after year one, uh, it's just kind of tough because this is a thin linebacker room. Um, I would imagine uh, if they you know, would have had it their way and, and probably you know worked through this um, with Demario Tolan, he would still be a Tiger. And uh, that's just me saying that without knowing anything other than that they are now thin at linebacker, and he was a very young, promising linebacker that you know was probably somebody that could have very well started next year as a sophomore. So um, one of those tough situations, and and with the transfer portal, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's suspensions and other things. Sometimes it's fresh start. Uh, just overall, or want to get closer to home. Um, I know a lot of the Florida schools were after him as a recruit um, just you know around a year ago this time. So I'm interested to see where he ends up um, because he is just such a promising young linebacker when uh, he's able to get on the field. Are you hearing any destinations of where he wants to go? And are you hearing, is it, is it NIL based? Is it... You know, oh, I just kind of want to get out of LSU, or is, or you just don't really know kind of what's going on or any details behind what, what made him want to leave? You know, nothing right now. Um, that's kind of the tough thing is just when you see a surprise portal entry, uh, that's something that, you know, usually somewhere along the line, somewhere, someone's gotten in their ear and said, you know, it's time, to, time for a fresh start. But you know, as a true freshman, he didn't end up getting too many snaps, but he played in a lot of games. Um, I'd be surprised if it was more of an NIL thing, um, you know, to be honest. But uh, there are some Florida schools that are desperate right now. Uh, Florida State is a, is a school that's really done well in the portal, and uh, they're they're killing it. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if they're you know a destination for him, but um, that's just that's just one of those schools that if he's looking to get closer to home potentially. Um, They've they've done a really nice job with uh, getting these guys and and moving quickly. Can you imagine him playing against LSU first week of the season in a top 10 matchup? That'd be tough. That's (laughs) tough pill to swallow. Hopefully, if he does that, he doesn't play very well. Um, That'd be Eli Ricks, like 2.0. Yeah, Yeah, well, Eli Ricks is going in the draft, thankfully. That's good. We only got to see him for a little bit after the year. Um, Where does LSU go here in the linebacker position? Obviously, you 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 talked about how light they are. DeMario Tolan was probably going to be, you know, on the depth chart as a starter, at least going into spring ball, he's gone. You know, do you do they have some targets in mind the transfer portal that they want to bring in to to take over in that linebacker uh, that linebacker group, or are they going to move Derek Davis Jr. back from safety to running back to linebacker? I actually said that I was like, shit, maybe he should be an outside backer. I don't know. Well, I've I've been banging the Derek Davis to linebacker uh, drum since he stepped on foot uh, as an early enrollee. He's just a little too big to play safety. But um, we kind of joked when when Demario Tolan entered the portal, uh, we should have just posted an article and it just said, "Who's next?" Derek Davis. Right. Just a picture. Of Derek. I mean, it seems but, like you um, fist that mold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he really does. Uh, somebody, that, you know, linebacker is one of those tough positions. You see him, you know, really work out when they're undersized and can really run and they add weight. Um, you know, you look back at a guy like Josh White, who transferred out. He was kind of in that mold. There was a lot of talk about he would be next. With Weeks, I'm watching him this week at the All-America Bowl. He's kind of undersized, um, you know, from a weight standpoint. But, man, he can fly. He's run with a lot of talented players this week uh, so far. And he's an early enrollee. So he's going to get on campus and be able to add that weight. I think Wade has shown that he's somebody that should be considered at least 
early on right now, you never know when they, until they get to campus, but as somebody who could battle his way right into that 2D um, and play early as a freshman because of that. Then they signed Christian Brathwaite out of the Houston area, who's a really, really productive truth thumper, um, kind of in that DeMar Nicola mold. Um, both uh, as a high school prospect were really productive on really good teams and really high classifications in their own states. Um, so that's kind of a similar player that's coming in uh, in the summer, though. I think they've got to try to find something in the transfer portal. Now, the window still goes until January 18th for guys to enter. So there could be ones that pop up. We've seen guys enter the portal just today and this week and um, all those things. So maybe someone pops up for them. And then there's also one after May. I think right now, as it stands, doesn't look like there's a ton of linebackers out there around the country. Um, so this is going to be a really kind of a tough scout for LSU. You don't want to take somebody just to take someone, right. um, especially, you know, uh, with how your roster is starting to come up with young guys developing um, and the two you just signed. Uh, but at the same token, they've got to find somebody who steps, steps in and, and provides some immediate competition um, and, and contributions out of the portal, in my mind, at least. Now, Billy, we haven't made it to actual National Signing Day yet, but as this thing is going and where we are here today, barring nothing really, nothing crazy like this, this situation actually happens again and somebody flips, which one of these incoming freshmen in your mind right now do you see making – a big impact next year, not just kind of getting some playing time, actually getting on the field for a sizable amount of snaps and actually making a big impact. Yeah, I, I think Deshaun Womack is, is somebody that you've got to circle at the defensive end spot. Uh, B.J. Ojolari leaves. Uh, Deshaun had just uh, an insane senior year, really, really productive, tested well over the summer before his senior year. Uh, and he's just backed it up in every setting. He looks the part of a college freshman and somebody that, you know, when he gets there in January, can uh, start, you know, working with the strength staff and really putting more mass on so that he can hold up over the course of an SEC season. I, I just think the world of him, I think he's going to be a star at LSU. Um, he's one to watch. I think Zalance heard the five-star offensive tackles playing, playing his way into that. Uh, we've just seen him go from being new to the position as a junior and playing alongside Will Campbell and, and standing out in his own right. We had him as a five-star very early on. And now as a senior, be absolutely dominant. He was incredible at LSU camp over the summer. Um, he was great at All-American, uh, at the Under Armour All-America game this whole week. He earned a top performer up nod just as a top offensive lineman overall. He's got the size. I mean, you just try to craft that, that mean streak and, and that, uh, those special gifts that he has from a physical perspective. And you try to get him on the field early. You know, Emory Jones maybe could slide inside. There's more natural spot. Um, and, and you, you could put, uh, Lance out at right tackle. I mean, he's just got that, that true gift of being, uh, an instant impact guy in my mind. If he gets everything down, you know, playbook wise. Uh, and, and those are the ones that really stand out along with JV and Tobiano. Uh, they recruited him out of the, uh, tech, uh, out of the state of Texas and won a really tough recruiting battle. I think he's physically ready to go. He's one of the most physically ready players, if not the most physical, physically ready in this class. I mean, he just looks the part of somebody who's been in the SEC already a couple of years. So he gets everything down and, and can adjust. He's, he'll be there in January as well. I think he's going to be able to step into that corner room and contribute early on. Um, this is ignorant of me, but I'm going to ask, <laughs> did you go to the Under Armour All-American game? Like, I'd imagine they were both in Orlando. I don't know if you went to the LSU cheese it bowl and then if you went to the under Armour all american game but I, nobody wanted to ask so i figured i would step on the sword here um if you did go what did you see obviously zelance heard you just mentioned you mentioned tobiano what if you could name it, a couple of other players like we, even, I if guess they the, even if they aren't coming to lsu either, yeah no but i guess the best way to put it is whenever you hear a zelance heard that says he wants to play left tackle yeah. and he's like trying to you know, make a statement. He obviously played with Will Campbell. What were some of the takeaways if you were at the game? I don't know. So it's my fault for not doing my research. <laughs> so Shay uh, has said on our podcast that uh, he hates Jesus. Well, I'm going to take the stance here that I hate Jesus so much that I was not there. Uh, I, I boycotted the, the entire game. But no. Uh, See, I think I did, I Billy, 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 <laughs> after, you, after I saw the Cheez-It mascot, I'm, I'm, I'm on the train. 
That man was on uh, one. He I'm was a, on full I'm a tilt. Goldfish, I'm a goldfish guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goldfish. Yeah, yeah, goldfish. Goldfish, for sure. No, um, no, well, so, sponsor so a bowl. Shay was down there. For, yeah, <laughs> Shay, was, Shay was down there uh, for the All-American, uh, for the Under Armour All-American, and, and did the dual uh, kind of duty. I, I drew the... Uh, San Antonio card, so I'm not sure. Oh. Um, I like San Antonio more than more than Orlando. I'll, I'll take that uh, and the Riverwalk. But uh, just from kind of what I watched and, and what our national guys have said, as well as Jay, uh, Zalance is as as advertised. I mean, he just really looks the part. Um, he dominated all week. We talked about him. Uh, JV and I had, had a really good week too. Uh, again, somebody that's physically ready to go. Uh, we rank him as a safety, and I think there's a chance he ends up there long term, but. He was uh, pretty impressive uh, just from a recovering uh, perspective. I watched all the one-on-one reps that uh, were posted, and, um, you know, he just looked the part. Uh, Shelton Sampson got nicked up early in the week, so he didn't get to do much uh, in the game. And then Ryan Yates, uh, who's been on the scene for a long, long time, just a steady presence back there at the safety position. He's physically ready. Um, there, there are a lot of LSU staffers that were even surprised when they got him to campus uh, for his visits this fall just how big he actually is as far as length and size and all that. So he's been playing at a very, very high level in Texas um, and, and has played, you know, good bit of safety as a senior. He, the plan was he was going to play a, a ton more and kind of be really groomed and ready um, for LSU, but he's had to play corner uh, probably three quarters of the last two years uh, due to injuries at Ted Guy or so. He's somebody that's been thrown into the fire as a, as a cover corner um, at a very high level and, now he's going to move to safety at LSU, and he's another early enrollee as well. So um, those are kind of some of the guys that uh, were there for LSU and, and, and participated. So I want to get back into the portal a little bit. Now, obviously, LSU's made a bunch of waves on the defensive line. Obviously, they had those, what, is it three in a row? It was three consecutive defensive line commitments. And, you know, you have the whole defensive line was out for the bowl game. Jaqueline Roy says he's going to go into the draft. And so they're trying to replenish, right? You think that they may be done, but – you see A&M's transfer, Anthony Lucas, right? He's a four-star. He's a very highly touted uh, defensive lineman. Uh, do you expect LSU to get involved there? Is that somewhere where they, they may look, or is he going to want to go back home to his home state of Arizona and just kind of go that way? Yeah, I think Anthony Lucas is one of the, the hot-button uh, guys who has now entered the portal because for so long a lot of people were expecting this mass exodus from A&M, and one of the players that was circled for a long time was Anthony Lucas, the former top 50 overall prospect. Somebody that Jamar Kane uh, recruited early on when he was at Arizona State. He offered um, Brian Kelly, recruited him at Notre Dame, had him up on campus for, I think, a couple visits. Um, and then LSU, even before the coaching change, was heavily in the mix for Anthony Lucas. Um, they kind of faded down the stretch when, when all that broke loose. But, you know, to answer your question, I think they are going to make that call. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to get him. I don't know uh, if it's even necessarily a great fit. Um, he's somebody that wants to play defensive end, uh, has for a long time. LSU needs another nose tackle type uh, defensive tackle uh, in the middle of my mind. I know they're going to go after true edge rush, rushers still. They've got to restock that uh, position a little bit more. But I, I think when you look at somebody who's 6'6", 270, and he wants to play defensive end, well, you got to have to balance that then with, you know, what does your roster actually need? So I'm interested to see how the conversations go. There's a lot of familiarity there. Um, he got into a little bit of uh, trouble at uh, Texas A&M, but, um, you know, here's a good joke. Who didn't? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but, part of the crew. Uh, no, all, all kidding aside, all kidding aside, he's, he's a pretty good kid. Uh, just probably got into a little bit of trouble down there um, from what – he was a part of that group that suspended, but um, he's you know, a kid. He's, really, he's a kid. Really they all, they all well, they're, they're yeah, he's part of the exactly. preseason All Americans. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. you, you learn, you go through your bumps and bruises, and you learn it. Nowadays, right, the way recruiting is, it's pretty intense. Obviously, back in the day, it used to be, hey, you're going to recruit from high school, you're going to recruit from you know a little bit of junior college, and you're going to recruit from some of the transfers that either are graduate transfers or just want to get out and move on. Right now, you have. High school, you have transfer portal, you have to recruit your own guys, right? So sometimes the biggest recruits that you have are the guys that you end up keeping or having to come back to school, right? One of those guys is John Emery, right? He, didn't, he hasn't announced. He hasn't announced that he's coming back to school. It seems like he is going to come back to school. He, show, he posted a picture of uh, him re-upping his deal with Gordon and saying, you know, it's going to be a big 2023. Um, you know, rumor is that it looks like he's probably coming back. How big is that for LSU, and what kind of went into that decision? 
Yeah, I'm very interested to see what happens with John Emery. Um, and quite frankly, had a couple of NHL, uh, NFL uh, agents. Well, NHL out. would have been a uh, wild, would have yes. been a wild career change. Hey. <laughs> hey, look, the World Juniors are going on here, and the U.S. is playing. So um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. that's awesome. Part, part, partly we're reminded, but uh, you know, John Emery uh, is somebody that a couple of NFL uh, agents have reached out about. Uh, wondering what, what's really going on. Because again, like you said, there hasn't been an announcement. Will he go pro? Will he head back to school? Will he head back to LSU? Uh, is the question. And, and right now, I still kind of get the feeling it's a little bit of a holding pattern. Um, the get, you know, the re-upping the deal with, with Gordon McKernan is big. I'm still interested to see if that follows through. It's kind of like when it's not the same at all. But when Keishon Butte announced he was coming back, people were like, what? <laughs> and based on kind of what we were hearing uh, on John Emery, it is still kind of, all right, I want to see it uh, formally happen uh, if he is going to come back. But look, LSD needs him. Um, that's a running back room that um, I, I think needs that veteran presence. Um, he's, some, he's somebody that um, just, you know, can provide that. And this, this you know, Caleb Jackson, Trey Holly coming in, you got no cane back, um, but you still have to have somebody that's been there uh, from the start, I feel like, and, and allow Caleb Jackson and Trey Holly to develop a little bit. I think LSU should go after a transfer running back at some point as well. Really? Um, just kind of, just that's just my opinion, just kind of an influx of talent if they can find it, you know, a true game breaker um, to, to add into that fold um, while Caleb Jackson develops. Um, I, that, they've got five scholarships available. I would use one on a running back. Um, if it was me, but uh, I'm not getting paid 96 million. Well, who, else, who, else do you think, uh, who else do you think? You said there's five scholarships available, right? How do you think those scholarships shake out? If you were at what you're hearing from, if you're talking to the coaching staff, you know, obviously not what you want to see. What you, what do you, where do you think those five scholarships are going to be allotted to? I think they go uh, one at defensive end, one at defensive tackle, one at the interior of the offensive line. Uh, and then kind of a best available. You know, they've, they've been poking around on some corners. Um, Fentrell Cypress was one that ended up going to FSU. We talked about how well they were recruiting earlier. Um, you know, they already pulled Denver Harris and Zai Alexander out of the portal. But I still think one more corner um, wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, so I would say just kind of a best available approach. And that leaves one uh, left. I would... I would take running back. I don't think they're going to do that. And that and that was my next question. So they're done in the, as far as like high school recruiting goes. If they have five scholarships left, like they they're going to use them all in the portal. Yeah, I think so. The two the two high school prospects they were in on Nicholas Harbour is to cut LSU. He's all in on playing tight end. It just kind of fizzled out. Mm. Um, I, I kind of expect him to end up at Oregon at this point. Wow. Uh, wow. And then you've got track and football. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's why, that's why I thought LSU, that's why I thought LSU was going to get him. Have you ever heard of a that's track guy play tight end? I mean, that's unbelievable. No, it's unbelievable. That's sprinter. Well, uh, <laughs> not a sprinter. Yeah, not, not a sprinter. Not a sprinter. Yeah. Not a sprinter. <laughs> yeah. Not a sprinter like him. Yeah. No. So uh, Jamel Howard is the other one who's defense tackle uh, out of Chicago. I think he's going to probably end up in Michigan at this point, but they're going to try to get him on a visit. He's still got some left that he can take. Um, so maybe if they get him, maybe they don't go after a portal defensive tackle because he's a big, big body in the middle. But that's kind of it from what we're hearing. We'll see if any, anybody pops up. But um, I would expect right now the, the portal is kind of the way to go the rest of the way. So I, I'm, I'm really interested in your, your, your take on the running back room. You really think that they should add another back. What is it that you think another back to this room would actually bring? Or how do, how do you think this would bring the room together, I guess I should say? I just think they're look they're they're missing a, a true explosive running back, and I know that's hard to hard to find. It, it, it's something that you know we've seen you know teams go away from. You know there there always is a you know kind of a third down back, or you know they're 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 sharing the load if you don't have a true workhorse in a sense. But you know I just think that you're missing that with you know John Emery's battled some consistency issues here and there. Uh, Noah Kane, kind of same story. Caleb Jackson is a freshman. Trey Holly um, is, is kind of a bowling ball who has a lot of wear and tear on him. You know, Caleb Jackson is probably the one that, out of the room, if you look at it, and, and Josh Williams is, runs as hard as anyone, but he's you know, not necessarily, again, a game breaker. Um, Caleb Jackson is the one that kind of has that future if it all comes together for him. Uh, he's got that verified track speed. Um, he's going to go try to win state this spring. I talked to him around signing day. He's getting getting back and healthy. But you know, outside of that, they, they just got some – 
just kind of some big bruisers. Um, I just think a little bit of explosiveness, a little bit of pop would really, really help. Um, you know, the LSU run game. Go ask if Trey Hannibal wants to go play running back. Good lord! I mean, that, guy, I mean, that guy's got some juice in there, huh? I mean, he's pretty explosive. Yeah, he gets going downhill. He gets going downhill. It, it, it's scary. It's scary. No doubt. Uh, Billy, I appreciate your time. One last question. Obviously, you may not, you probably don't know the answer. This is all speculation. We don't really know. There's three quarterbacks on the roster. Obviously, that is the big. Uh, is there a controversy? Is there not a controversy? According to Brian Kelly, there is no controversy. Jaden Daniels is quarterback one, which I think we all agree in this room specifically. That's how it should be. Uh, it's his job to lose. Obviously, Nussmeyer is running out of time in his college career. Do you see after spring practice, or even at spring practice, do you see LSU having all three of those quarterbacks uh, still on campus? As of, as of right now, I do. And I, and I think there's not – it's not politics that's being played by Ryan Kelly. It, it, and it's not an open competition. And those things, I think – in my opinion, are true. You've got Jaden Daniels. He's a starter. You've got Garrett Nussmeyer, who in his last two outings has shown what he can do. And when it all comes together for him, still, he's got to, you know, make sure he doesn't turn the ball over. Jaden Daniels, you want to see him push the ball down the field more. Walker Howard still has a bright future in my yep. mind. Yep. And, he, and he's very, very young. So I think you kind of take him out of the, well, could something happen there equation as now. And the way Brian Kelly's played it, yeah, he's been pretty honest with Garrett Nussmeyer, and it, it's tough. It was would have been tough to see LSU go in a different direction that late in the regular season um, after the AM game or, or what, what have you, um, because Jaden was the one who got him there. So when Garrett got his opportunity, he took advantage of it in both of the opportunities that he got in the last two games, and I think that said a lot. And I, I think in terms of LSU's staff and how they're handling it, they're saying, "Look, Jaden's our starter," and that I think makes sense to everyone. And like you guys said in the room. Uh, that you guys are sitting in. It makes sense. But Garrett Nussbier has a chance to challenge um, and keep improving and keep showing what he can do. And if Jake Daniels doesn't necessarily bring what they need him to do to take this team to the next level, I don't think they're afraid to go to Garrett Nussbier, especially now after the last two games. And Brian Kelly's kind of shown that in his career. He's not afraid to play a second quarterback. Um, sometimes even three. Um, so uh, this is a this is a comp- it's. I don't think it's a competition for who's going to start necessarily, but it's a competition. And I would say that's kind of across the board at all the positions. I know it's cliche, but they backed it up. You know, when someone isn't performing well, they've given opportunities elsewhere. And I, I think the quarterback position is no different. That's how, that's now, how so it I should be. They're all on the roster. Yeah, absolutely. And, and guys can progress and develop. And you, you've got eight months until uh, fall camp. So there's a lot of time for that to happen. And that that you kind of hit on what I was going to ask, but don't you don't you think that that was a little bit I don't want to say odd, but to be able to see the way that they worked Nussmeyer in almost unnecessarily, I would say like it would they put him in the at a spot in the game where it wasn't necessarily over, and it's and you know Brian Kelly's track record with playing multiple quarterbacks is that something that you feel like I don't want to say was promised to Garrett Nussmeyer? You see the way he loves LSU, like you see him on the sidelines, he does the cheese it like. Gets the room, gets the NIL deal, I guess, for, I guess, a week. But is that something where it's almost he doesn't want to leave, but then you see the talent that's being played out where Brian Kelly's not afraid to start, too? Yeah, I, I think so. And and look, I mean, Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer both hosted recruits during the, you know, the lead stretch. I mean, I just talked to Morgan Pimpton, and Jaden Daniels was his host. So these guys are all in on LSU and what they're doing, in my mind. It, look, even if Garrett Nussmeyer Meyer did decide to leave. It doesn't mean he's out on LSU. And he hates LSU. I mean, he's, he claims you know Lake Charles is his hometown. That's that's right up right there on his profile. That's you know he's a Louisiana guy. And so I, I think that it, it's just one of those things where it will eventually work itself out. I don't always think it has to be black and white. Where right. well, Jaden Daniels is going to start again next year, so Garrett Nussmeyer is going to leave the day the season ends. And you know, who knows? He could enter the portal tomorrow, but I don't think that's happening at this point. But, um, you yeah, know, that's kind of the crazy world we live in. But I, I think they're going to battle it out, and I think it makes sense for all, all the parties involved. If you like, just to just to speculate real quick, if he were to enter the portal, where do you where would you see him going? <laughs> oh, no, I know, it, I know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but it seems like he's SEC talented, like SEC caliber. It might be a TCU. That's what but, I kept saying. That's what I think. That's there's what... also a world where I see him going to Ole Miss. Like, that, is that the level of talent in which he is, like, those are the people that are calling? 
Uh, I would say if he entered the portal, I would bet you he'd go to DC. I agree. I mean, his boy's there. His dad's just in very, Dallas. Just like, it just, yeah. It just yeah. makes too much sense. Yeah. Um, they need a quarterback next year. Jalen Morris, isn't it? Well, let's not let's 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 keep that here, okay? Let's not let's keep that hush hush. Let's yeah, not talk I'm pretty about sure. it. If he's thinking about uh, it, it's on his mind. No, no, no. I know. I guarantee he's I'm not sure, sitting at home like. I'm sure. I'm sure he watches our show for all his information. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, so let's, you know what? Uh, they make so much sense. Yeah, yeah like, let me call my dad. Um, Billy, man. I, I mean, Garrett, Garrett Nussmeier stopped by SMU at some point. He's on a little board somewhere. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, man, I appreciate you coming on. I know it's been, it's been a busy, hectic uh, last month or so, and it's only going to get busier for you. But uh, we always appreciate your insight. We always appreciate you coming on the show. We'd love to have you on as much as you'd like to come on. And uh, we appreciate it, man. Go get some rest. Anytime, fellas. Thanks for having me. I